weight loss rates. So uh, I, we, this is a fat loss uh, focus, but uh, it's important to talk about weight loss because weight loss is a lot easier to track than fat loss, unless you've sort of got a DEXA scanner or an ultrasound machine or something like that, you're not gonna be able to track week to week changes in body, fo body fat accurately. So what we instead do is we use the change in body weight as a proxy for that change in body fat. So when we lose weight on the scale, most of it is fat, but some of it also comes from lean tissues, things like muscle. A fast rate of weight loss, say each week, that can speed the amount of total fat loss that happens in that week, but it's also gonna increase the amount of muscle loss. The leaner we get, so the less fat we have on us, the more risk of muscle loss we are. But if we go with a very slow rate of weight loss, this might just drag out the diet for so damn long um, that things just start feeling stale and it feels like you're sort of chronically dieting all the time and your psychology um, might just turn to trash. So we need to find a happy medium between dragging out the diet so long that it just becomes monotonous and uh, basically boring versus going so fast where we get a good amount of fat loss, but we also risk losing our muscle mass that we've built. At the start of a diet, we often have really high motivation. We're excited to get stuck in. We have low hunger, good energy levels, and because we have that higher body fat, we're at lower risk of muscle loss. But if we compare that to being at the end of the diet, we often have basically the opposite. So we'll have low motivation, we're sick of the diet, hunger's shot right up, uh, energy levels might have taken a dive, uh, and at that point we're at risk of muscle loss. So considering all those things, it's smarter to start the diet with a faster rate of loss on the scale and end with a slower rate of weight loss. So something like losing, the, losing a few kilos within the first month, that's a pretty good idea. Uh, not only because at the start of the diet, your energy and your motivation is high and risk of muscle loss is low, but once you see some really big changes on the scale early on, it gives you motivation to fuel sort of the rest of the diet. And that's one of the reasons why basically very low calorie diets or low energy diets are really effective for overweight and obese people because um, they start with these basically these really big energy deficits they lose a bunch of weight on the scale they're losing kilos and kilos they see that and it, it motivates them to keep pushing to get more of it whereas if you if you take an overweight person you diet them really slowly and they're 150 kilos and they see 300 grams fall off on the scale that's just gonna just gonna push them to fall off quite quickly. So, in terms of how the rate of weight loss should be scaled with how long you're dieting, typically longer diets will use a slower rate of weight loss, but shorter diets usually have um, a faster rate of weight loss. So, how fast is fast, and how slow is slow? Well, the ideal range for maximum fat loss and minimum, sorry, that's supposed to say muscle loss, I missed that, and minimum muscle loss is 0.5 to 1% of your body weight per week. So how do you choose if you should go with a half a percent or 1%? Well, 1% is usually recommended for people with higher body fat levels and, at the, and when you're at the start of the diet because as we said, motivation's high, hunger's pretty low, uh, so you can go with those bigger deficits and you're not, you're not at risk of losing any muscle. <coughs> if you contrast that to someone who's really lean and maybe they're sort of coming to the end of the diet, you wanna pull things back a little bit. So somewhere around 0.5%. 
per week. And, and what that means is um, it's going to still allow you to lose a bit of fat, but it's not going to go so fast that your body's going to have to reach into those muscle stores to get energy as well. And maybe you just want to go somewhere in the middle. Maybe you're sort of medium, um, medium body comp medium body fat level, somewhere in the middle of the diet. You can you can pick maybe something like a zero point seven percent. And based on once you have a target, so let's say zero point five percent per week, you you aim to lose that much on the scale of your body weight each week. If you in really basic terms, if you're not losing as much as that, you're not reaching the 0.5% limit, you take a little bit of food out of your diet. It, if you're um, gaining faster than that, too fast, then maybe you might wanna add a little bit of food back into the diet. All right, so duration. How do we decide how long we should diet for? Well. It basically comes down to how much weight you want to lose or, or, or are prepared to lose because everyone likes the idea of dropping 10 kilos, but they're often not prepared to diet the amount of time that's necessary to get that off. So um, the amount of weight you want to lose plus the amount that you're prepared to lose. So I'm going to work through an example to highlight this. So let's say we have an 80 kilo person and they want to lose five kilos. If we use our ideal range of half to 1% of their body weight per week in, in weight losses, that works out to be a 400 to 800 gram loss on the scale each week. If we want to go slow, so the 0.5% limit, we, we aim to lose 400 grams per week and then 5,000 grams, which is five kilos, divided by the 400 gram target equals 12.5 weeks of dieting is required. If we wanna go fast and we wanna lose 800 grams per week, 5,000 times 800 equals 16.25. So you have to diet half as long as the other method, but your calories near food will have to be a fair bit lower. So how do we adjust along a fat loss diet? The number of calories that we're gonna consume at week one of the diet that maybe will allow us to lose 0.5 to 1% of our body weight, it's just not gonna cause that same amount of weight loss in week six of the diet. As we diet, as we lose weight, we see a slowing down of our metabolic rate, which is, is an adaptation in the body to stop us losing continual weight. Uh, humans are, are just a species and we've evolved and one of those evolutionary defense mechanisms is to basically stop us from starving in, in, a, in a famine. So um, to stop us losing continual, continual weight, if we didn't have access to food, our body slows down our metabolic rate so we don't keep losing as much. When our metabolic rate slows down, we burn less calories at rest and also when we're moving. And not, it does occur partly through a, a drop in our resting metabolic rate, but it also happens to a large degree uh, by reductions in something that we talked about last lecture, which is NEAT, our non-exercise activity thermogenesis. So basically subconscious activities that aren't planned activity like fidgeting, uh, taking the dog for a walk, uh, doing your shopping, things like that. Um, and the research suggests that uh, during dieting and weight loss, you can actually get a 20 to 25% decrease um, in your energy output per day. So as the energy output slows down, this obviously means that the difference between our energy in and our energy out is less, so the energy deficit gets smaller. This means weight and fat loss will slow down. So to get past this, which what we refer to as plateaus when we're just not losing as much weight as we want, we must either increase our planned activity, 
So extra walks, bike rides, extra gym sessions, or we must decrease our food intake to establish the original energy deficit. When you are no longer losing half to 1% of your body weight per week, we recommend reducing your food intake by five to 10%. You don't want to make too big adjustments when you hit weight loss plateaus, uh, because if you jump down to cal if you jump down to too much of a low cal caloric level, it's going to be very hard to stick to. And once calories are really, really low, and you plateau on that, you haven't really got anywhere to go. So summarizing that in some advice: if we hit weight loss plateaus, which obviously mean fat loss is stalled as well. We, want to de de we can decrease our intake, our intake of calories by five to 10%. Another way we can do it is we can decrease our calorie intake by two to 5%, but we add 10% of cardio time. We might leave our calorie intake the same, but because food's really, really low, we don't want to take it any lower. We just add 20% of cardio time. So let's say you're doing 200 minutes of planned uh, exercise per week. You didn't want to drop your food. You want to increase it by 20%. You could add 40 minutes extra per week. And the caveat to this is that this is assuming your compliance to the diet, so how well you're sticking to the diet, is close to 100%. If you're having trouble sticking to the program, and you're not hitting your targets as they stand, reducing calories is, is a bad option. It's unlikely to fix anything. In fact, it's just likely to make it even harder to stick to. So before reducing the calorie deficit further, see if you can identify the cause, which is um, basically pushing you to fall off the wagon or overeat or undertrain or something like that. Once you identify the cause, you can put some uh, put some steps in place to counteract them. All right, carbs and fats. So, carbs and fats. All right, so we've talked a lot about protein and in the last lecture. Now, once our protein intake is achieved, which is, as we said in the last lecture, somewhere around two grams per kilo of body weight. Uh, the amount of carbs and fats you consume within your left, leftover calorie intake should be based on your preference mostly. So some people prefer eating a bit of higher carbs, some people eating, uh, prefer eating a little bit higher fats. And if you tell them to do the opposite of what they like doing, uh, it's probably going to mean that they find great difficulty in sticking to the program. Um, and you want to construct a diet that suits your own preferences so you find it relatively easy to stick to. You don't want to make it any harder than it has to be. But there are still some other considerations with um, planning your carbs and fats during a fat loss phase. A higher carb with a lower fat intake during weight loss is generally better for athletes or people who are doing lots of exercise per week because it allows for, for better performance. Some research also suggests that higher carb diets with lower fats also maintain more of your lean mass during fat loss. So if you want to lean down but you don't want to look scrawny and uh, like a um, big a string cheese by the, end of the, by the end of it, you want to maintain lots of your muscle, uh, Maybe you want to go with a little bit of a higher carb diet just to maintain a bit more lean mass. Having a high fat diet with a low carb diet also works, but you're probably going to notice big drops in energy and big drops in performance. And an important thing to remember is carbs are not fattening. Despite what the media will tell you and any of those scary documentaries, if you look at the research by the best nutritionists in the world, it's 
highly compelling that carbs are not the cause of fat gain. The cause of fat gain or fat loss is the control of the amount of calories we consume. So those calories can come from carbs, they can come from fats, it doesn't matter. The overall calories matters most. Um, the amount we consume, that's what dictates the amount of weight or fat loss. So advice, <clears throat> once you've set your protein, so somewhere around um, two grams per kilo of your body weight, you wanna set fats at somewhere around 20 to 30% of your daily energy intake. And then whatever's left over once you've taken protein and fat, fill it up with carbs. This is advice for someone who's trying to get the best results possible during a fat loss phase. Hey guys, Martin from JPS Health and Fitness here. Thanks for watching today's video. This was a small snippet from the fat loss lecture, which is part of our fundamental series in our new education portal. This is a new learning platform for health and fitness enthusiasts. To find out more about the portal, see the link below and stay tuned for next week.